Hey friend, Chris here from widelogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 19 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel website, where I'll help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Today, let's dig into the library in Logic Pro, which is an awesome area that can quickly get the ball rolling for you and your projects. With the library, you can choose between different patches or presets, and a patch can come preloaded with everything from audio effects to instrument plugins, routing, smart controls, and more. By poking around the library, you can end up finding a sound that could be a source of inspiration as you're recording and producing. Plus, you can save your own patches and presets for sounds, routing, and processing that you may like to use again in the future. So let's dig in. All right, taking a look at the project in front of us, we have four different tracks. Starting at the top, we have a software instrument using Logic Pro's included electric piano instrument plugin. After that, we have a drummer track using an instance of the drum kit designer instrument plugin. Following, we have an instance of drum machine designer for another software instrument track type. And lastly, we have an audio track of a sub bass recording. And if you take note on the left hand side in the inspector, as I select each different track in my project, we can see that the channel strip in focus on the left updates to that of the associated channel strip for our selected track. As a reminder, every track in your project will be associated with a channel strip, and your channel strips will allow you to balance and process and route your audio and performances. Let's now open the library by going up to the library button in the upper left-hand corner of the control bar and clicking. The library loads from the left-hand side, and depending on what the library is focused on, will determine what kind of options the library will present us. So if you take note, there's a little blue triangle to that of the left-hand side of the setting field in our channel strip. And based on the fact that this particular setting field says electric piano, as can be noted right here in the library, a patch has been loaded to the channel strip in this project. We can see we have the electric piano patch under the external instrument subcategory. If we slide across, we can see that external instrument category lives in the logic category under the legacy category, which is also noted at the bottom of the library. And if we take a listen to the electric piano, that's what our instrument sounds like. This MIDI performance is being processed through the electric piano plugin, through the compressor, through the channel EQ, and out to the stereo output for our whole project. We can also adjust how loud or quiet this instrument is, as well as place it from left to right. So if we once again take a listen. All these different aspects of our channel strip came loaded with this particular patch the electric piano patch. I keep saying this word patch, and a patch really encompasses way more than just a preset sound that comes with an instrument plugin. And really it's easier to show you than to explain. So if we navigate through the library, and we'll take a look under the studio strings category, under the section instruments. And if I select the King's Cross patch, everything about our electric piano channel strip is going to change. Look at that, all the plugins have changed. We don't see an instrument anymore. We see a bus, which by the way, we'll explore sends buses and auxes later in the series. We have buses that route this sound to some reverbs if we want more reverb sound for the string section. If we expand the track stack and go poking around, we can see a string instrument plugin with individual string sections with their own routing, plugins, panning, and we have everything from violins to double basses. So if we now take a listen to our instrument. Everything about this channel strip has been changed. We went from having an electric piano track to having a string track with just the click of our mouse. And again, this applies to any track type in your project. If we select our drummer track, the library is updated. We can see that our drummer is that of Curtis. And we're using the drum kit, the Neo Soul kit with drum kit designer here. If we take a listen. And 
And because we're working with a drummer track, we can choose a different type of drummer and a different drum kit altogether. So I'll change my drummer to that of Isabel and I'll choose the studio kit. If we take a listen, and you can see the instrument, the plugins, everything is changing. Let's go down to our audio track, take a listen. Of course, audio tracks don't have instrument plugins to load because when you record audio, you're using an input on your audio interface or you're importing audio into your project. So in this case, we're choosing to load a patch with audio effects and routing. So I'll choose an experimental texture and we'll choose maybe the soft glow. All right, so we have all these plugins, this routing. Let's take a listen. pretty interesting, right? So we have everything from strings to synths to samplers. For our audio tracks, we have everything from choosing preset sounds for acoustic guitar, for vocals, drums and percussion. There's so many different sounds for you to choose from for your different tracks. But as I mentioned earlier, the different options that are available to you from the library depends on what the library is focused on on your channel strip. Going back over to that setting field, we see that blue triangle right to the left of it. If we hover our mouse next to an audio effect plugin, we can see a gray triangle. And if we click on it, the view has been updated from that of different available patches for our track type to that of specific presets of the chosen plugin. Right, let's go back up to the setting field. Let's choose a different patch altogether. So maybe I'll choose keyboards and we'll go to perhaps this 80s sign synth. Take a quick listen. Yeah, that'll be perfect. And we then can change the focus of the library to that of the instrument plugin, in this case, RetroSynth. And if we open the RetroSynth by clicking on the center of the plugin and go to the drop down menu in the upper left hand corner, look at that. We have different preset sounds that we can load for this instrument from synth leads to pads, bass, strings, and more. And all those different preset categories are reflected in the library. So check it out. If we select maybe a synth pad, we can see that pad has been selected as well right over here. Let's take a listen. And let's now select maybe a synth keyboard from the library. All right, now we can start choosing different presets for our plugins as well. So maybe Space Designer. And we go into the Large Spaces category, Halls. And let's take a listen. And going into the Preset menu and reflecting it back. Right, this applies again to any track type. So we can select our soft glow preset for our sub bass. Take a look at the compressor. Maybe set this compression by type, FET bass. Pretty awesome. Let's load a MIDI effect plugin real quick, just to illustrate that this can be applied again to any type of plugin that you're using on your channel strips. That's pretty sick, right? And we can even change the focus from our primary channel strip that's associated with the track that's selected in the tracks area to that of the secondary channel strip. In this case is the main stereo output for the whole project. So if we hover our mouse right next to the setting field, 
we can now choose between different presets for our main stereo output, maybe to a top 40 style of processing for a whole mix. Look at all those plugins that have been loaded. Let's take a listen. That's amazing. If we shift and click on this bus, we can change the focus of the secondary channel strip to that of this reverb. And once again, now we have different options we can choose from for our auxes. So we see shared aux, large room reverb, Hansa Studio. Maybe we choose a plate for our harmonic waves here. Right, a lot of good stuff that we can poke through. But perhaps there are certain aspects of a patch that you like, but there are other aspects that you want to try out different instruments, different plugins, different routing that come with other patches. Let's say that I really dig what I've chosen for the arpeggiator for this performance. And I really like the retro synth, but I'm not too sure about this plugin processing or the routing to that reverb. Well, if we go down to this button in the bottom left hand corner of the library that looks like an ellipsis, we have this option to enable patch merging. A new section of the library will pop up. And from here, you can choose which parts of your channel strip that you don't want to change when you select a new patch. With all four of these options enabled, once I select a different patch, every aspect of my channel strip will be changed. Right, the instrument, the plugins, the routing, everything. But if I undo using Command Z, if I now say, hey, no, I want to keep my MIDI effect, I want to keep my instrument, I just want to change the audio effects in the routing. Well, look at that. We kept the MIDI effect. We kept the instrument. Everything else changed. Or we can go the opposite direction. Maybe we'll get rid of the MIDI effects and instruments, but keep everything else. once you land on a preset or patch that you love and like and want to use again and again, you don't have to just use the stuff that comes with Logic Pro. You can create and save your own. So if we make some changes to that of maybe the bit crusher, so let's maybe just the downsampling here. So I made a bunch of changes to this instrument and I want to save this patch as a whole now. We can go down to save. We can save this as Chris's favorite key. Click save. And now under the user patch section, we can see it right there. If we load a new software instrument with an empty channel strip and go right under user patch, and load that patch in particular. And the same can be applied to the individual plugins. So for the Bit Crusher, I'll save this. You can see under the Bit Crusher preset folder, I'm going to call this Chris's favorite Bit Crusher. And look at that. If we open the plugin, there it is Chris's favorite Bit Crusher saved as a preset. And lastly, if you want to locate a patch or preset in the library, you can do that either using the search field right at the top. So I'll type in 808 Flex for a different instance of Drum Machine Designer. We can see the 808 Flex right there if we click. All right, our instrument has been updated. The patch and everything contained within has been also updated. or you can go right to the top of the library and there's an option to pick through different sound and producer packs. So we could go down to maybe the Oak Felder producer pack. All right, now we can go through all the synth and piano and key and electric drum sounds that come with that particular sound pack in Logic Pro. All right, tomorrow we're gonna explore the game-changing drummer track type in Logic Pro and what drummer brings to the table for your productions. Thanks so much, take care.